Hey everyone, Matt from soundrolling.com here with the uh, 633 um, and now I'm just going to take you through kind of the interface uh, and the inputs. I did a video on how to set these all up in the menu so this is just basically explaining that we have three XLRs, uh, three line level ins, there's TA3s um, if you need to get in a connector it's the male that'll fit female that'll fit into this, this is a male one um, and you have your X3 and X4 out, which is customizable in the menu. Um, you also have AES, which you can use on one and three. Yeah. Um, but the main difference, just to realize, is that anything you put on these last three, so four, five, and six, is going to be line level only. Only line level. So ideally, if it's on a radio mic, um, you already boost it with a receiver um, or if it's coming from another source, it's already boosted, so you don't have to sort of absolutely crank all your gain up. Um, and this is very familiar to anyone who has the sound devices, uh, especially 664. Um, so we have uh, panning left and right. Uh, we have toggle. Uh, so this is an on at the moment, so let's just turn that on. This is a gain just for number one. So yeah, put that on. And if we want to activate number four, we pop out this little fader and we click that on as well. Um, so if I go left, uh, this is channel one. And if I go right, then it's channel four. So channel one, again, we have, uh, if we're going to the LR mix, if we're going to X1, X2, and we can do those as a pre-fade only on channel one and channel three, I believe. Um, and these are all your different powering options for your mic uh, in terms of what they need. So obviously you'll need uh, mic PH for boom microphones, just mic for radio microphones, um, and if you're using AES or any of the options there. And also you can choose whether uh, the high pass filter is on. So I don't know if you can quite see that. That's 130 hertz. So yeah, so we're just changing that all the way around. And it goes all the way up to 240, and the minimum is 80. So again, they've just kind of put it into the menu without having a, a physical button for that, which used to be here on, say, the 664. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is how you're going to mix everything. In terms of uh, line level stuff, yeah, you basically have to obviously have the fader at zero. Um, you can put trim on, which only goes up to, I think, oh, which is just by turning this. Trim only goes up to 16 and goes down uh, to 30. So for radio mics, for instance, I've been using uh, about 16 and boosting slightly in the receiver end as well just to get an average. Uh, don't pay attention to this, this is just the mic level, so it's not uh, dependent on how much I change the fader. So there you have it, that's kind of a quick crash course of uh, going through the inputs. So now onto the outputs, we're gonna have, uh, so your left and your right, and you're gonna have your X1 and the X2, which is all routable through the menu, which I did in another video. Uh, you have your time code, which is still a five pin limo, uh, it's a standard connection for all um, uh, 664 sound devices type devices, all sound devices devices, um, and this is your return for your headphones, um, and this is your actual headphone input. Uh, so your return is when you link to a camera, and you can plug in there and listen to the camera from an umbilical cord or a loom. Uh, there's very, various different names for that. And again, just to clarify that the X3 and X4 outputs are here. Uh, and I would use those for like uh, director's headsets or anything like that really. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums up inputs and outputs.